Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we're going to be starting something new-ish. That is going to be a servo drive. We are going to be starting piling through all different types of servo drives that are out there, their setups, their controllers and everything else that you may need to do with them. As I was progressing with this drive, I figured out that there's going to be quite a lot of videos before we can get to actual sequence programming. So we're going to be doing step-by-step -step guides uh, from one point to another. So today's video is going to be more or less about wiring. What each of these guys is, what do they mean, how to wire them and everything in between. So uh, we're going to be using as well the connecting the server motor to it. And also we're going to be doing a live uh, test basically uh, just to uh, test, it, test it out and see how it works. There's a couple of softwares you can use at least for the J3. Uh, I'm not sure about J2. Uh, J3 you can use MR Configurator. And the one we're going to be using is MR Configurator 2. Unfortunately, that one is not free. But if you head to Mitsubishi website, register with them, you can get the MR Configurator for 20 day trial. So do uh, try to register them and see if you get one out, if you want to start uh, playing with it. And there's also another software that's required when it can more or less come down to, uh, I don't have with me, there is actually a two axis controller uh, that is coming, uh, is plugged onto FX3U series uh, PLC. So uh, we need that one and for that for that program we need FX Configurator and FX Configurator is free from Mitsubishi website for anybody to get. There's a lot of companies out there are selling FX Configurator for roughly about 100 and something quid. It's crazy. It's free. Do check out guys. Do check out other people's websites. It's not people's websites. Do check out websites because you often will find a lot of the softwares are actually free. There's a lot of companies capitalizing on that. So do check it out so uh, fx configurator fp or something like that it is free from uh, mitsubishi and i will leave a link in the description below i'm not sure does it need to go in tandem with the mar configurator because i really didn't, didn't check it out but i'm definitely gonna check it out and within fx uh, fx configurator you can also do the jogging and things like that for this guy as well so uh so yeah do check out everything like that in the description below all the manuals everything unless i do think will benefit you anyway will be in uh, description below and also as we progress the videos i'll be leaving additional videos in description so you can just click them through and uh, see uh which step and which stage you want to check it out so i haven't said that without further ado guys let's get started <music> So, ladies and gentlemen, let's get cracking. So, as usual, as we do with the drives, we do actually the same thing as well with our uh, servos as we're going to be progressing through them. Uh, we're going to start with uh, the wiring. Right in here, when you open up, this is where you have your uh, control box in here where you can read out some errors or, or whatever the machine is doing, things like that. And this dial in here, that dial is for your axis selection. So at the moment we have selected us uh, axis zero and that will be in later videos. We're going to be looking a lot more data in that when you're going to be connecting to uh, where is that unit? I'll show you in the minute. When you're going to be connecting our server drive to this guy. This guy is the one that you need to use if you're using FX3U PLC. And we're going to show you, well, I'm going to show you how to get this baby boy going in upcoming videos. So, uh, so yeah, so, so this is where you select what axis you're going to be on. And, and this, this, these switches in here, only one of them isn't functional. So this is number one, you're pretty much uh, down, which means it's normal function. you're basically working as a normal servo. And uh, up, which means you are in a test mode. So uh, which we are going to be testing today. So we're going to move that up. So if you want to use your MR configurator, uh, we will need to put, make sure that switch is in up mode and that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. So yeah, and uh, next one, you're going to have USB port in there, which is where you are doing your communication. CN3, uh, is it, it very rarely anybody uses that, but it is an option if you want to control your server externally with external signals, that's for the external board. Uh, CN1A uh, and CN1B, uh, that's pretty much your communications with your 20 SCC. So and and then obviously it can continue to the next drive with the, uh, to the next uh, servo with the connection from there to the next part in there. So continuation, I would call that. So this guy in here, this is your a uh, uh, where you're going to be connecting your a uh, uh, encoder. 
So that's uh, that is that. And right down here in the bottom, there's you've got the battery uh, plug in here. This battery plug is quite crucial if you're using absolute uh, encoders. Uh, we one day we're going to be looking into different types of uh, thingies, but do make sure if you're using absolute encoder, if you do, which one we're going to do, do be doing the setup within the FX uh, configurator, which is again upcoming videos. It's very crucial to make sure you select increment or absolute uh, encoder. Because if you select absolute encoder, it will be throwing all sorts of errors at you, saying that the encoder is not right and, and a battery is not seen and blah, blah, blah. So every time you see your system has the battery on it, it's very much likely that you are using a, an absolute encoder. And absolute encoders are really good. But again, that's not the subject of today. So next, let's come to the live wiring in here. This is the confusing part of the lot, which, which I completely uh, don't like. And then and, and, uh, for the average job, it looks at it as well, it's line one, line two, and three, and it will think it's a three phase 415 in the UK. And so we will shove that in without looking at the uh, actual uh, uh, drawing. Obviously, the drawing clearly states you put the nine line where you put the line in the neutral, but when uh, somebody, uh, electrician, uh, some electrician will look at it, that was actually what it means for them. It's three phases going in, but it's not. So L1 stands for the line, and L2 stands for the neutral if you're using a single phase supply. If you are in states, you're most likely going to be using L1, L2, L3. That will work out for you as 220 volts. Or is your state using 220 volts? I don't really know. So yeah, so if you, you need you need the three phases, 220 volts. So this guy in here, P1, P2, is always closed by, by, by manufacturing settings because it is uh, only needed when you are using power factor improving DC reactor, which we are not going to be doing that. So the next one as well, again, that, that would be the P uh, connector between P and D. Make sure that isn't there unless you are using a, um, a regen regenerative options. So again, we're not going to be doing any of that, but that's again more or less for the bigger drives, I think. The small drives will be just fine. Uh, so yeah, and then uh, when you see down here, we've got L L11 and L21. And I tell you one thing, so many people blew this up. They just put two phases right in there. Because again, if they fail to look at the, 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 the wiring diagram, they'll put the two phases in there and kaboom. And I already made a video, which is not yet published, where I just recently found out one of my uh, one of the drives I have recently de decommissioned. Yeah, no, not decommissioned. I don't even know where I got it from. Uh, and it's blue. So, uh, which I'm going to be showing in the next video. Uh, this guy in here, UVW, it's your motor. And the motor, as you can see down here, the, you can see down there, it actually says each cable is very clearly marked UVW. Do not mix them. Make sure they can respond to these guys in here. Same as it says in there. Try not to mix them up because your drive is not going to like it. It will go all over the uh, place. So do make sure you correspond to those. And then you've got Earth down there. And that pretty much, ladies and gentlemen, it covers the standard. This is like B version. And obviously there's, a, there's many different versions. But generally this is what you're going to be able, you're going to be seeing. And of course there's more additions. You can have a C and a 2L in here. And then uh, there's uh, other options coming with the Ethernet ports and blah, blah, blah. So generally... This is a pretty good start, and this is quite generally used quite a lot of these, these uh, servo, uh, servo amplifiers all over the place. So uh, let's power this thing up. Uh, as you can see, I because I am... Uh, actually, what I can do... Can you see? Yeah, you can see 60B down there. So if I put that one down... So, that, so I'm going to shut it down. Put it back on. So uh, this is what you see. He's got pretty much. He's got absolutely no communications. A B. He's not communicating with anybody because it doesn't see anything being connected to it. So usually, if everything goes well, it will go on. But again, that's an upcoming video so where we're going to be checking that out as well. So at the moment, we are in A B, and we're going to change it into the. In the. There we go. Test mode. And once you're in test mode and everything goes well. You should be just going into code a B00. So that means you are in a test mode. Can you see it? I'm not sure you can see it. There you go, you can see it now. So yeah, so that's pretty much uh, our drive is ready. The only thing we need now is a USB cable that I can't seem to see yeah, somewhere around there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna plug my US standard USB cable in here and I will see you on a computer. Here we are. So uh, there's a couple of ways we can connect to our uh, server via computer at the moment. 
just for the testing purposes and things like that. Uh, it is MR configurator, this guy in here, or uh, it is a uh, this guy in here, FX configurator. Now, FX configurator is actually free of charge, which you're going to show that in the link in the description below. So all of this, as uh, all most of this you're going to see in here, will be in the description below. All the links. Once you click the first link, which takes to my Mitsubishi, where you have to open an account. Once you open an account, you can get to this page where is your softwares. From there on, you're gonna you can find a software called MR Configurator 2, which is 20 days trial. If you don't work and if you don't have IQ Works 2, or you want to purchase the MR Configurator separately, I don't know why would you do that because you can get really bargain prices nowadays. Mitsubishi is very aggressively selling their products with pretty much bargain price of their softwares. If you can't find one, definitely get in touch. I'll be sure to help you out. So. Yes, this there you go. There you can get MMR configured and you can do it through there. So I haven't done that. Oh yeah, and by the way, and then you can have uh, this link in here, which again you're gonna be a link in the description below. And this link in here, right in here, bottom, you can see the download FX configured uh, E and FX3 U E N T utilities. Uh, not this. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. this one in here. You, you you can download this one as well. This one the net as well. But for one way we're gonna be working for the drives is this guy in here, FX3 U blah blah blah. Download it. And uh, you should be, I'll show you in a minute how to that works as well. So both links are going to be in the description below. So first, let's start with MR configurator. We did an MR configurator, as soon as you load up, because I last worked on MRJ3B, he already pretty much saves that part of it. And then I just well, do, do you want to create a project? But even the parameters from the right? Yeah, why not? So now we just down, downloaded all the parameters. And what can we do in it? There's quite a lot of things we can do. And quite a lot of things we cannot do what J4 can do. And J4 will be upcoming uh, servo uh, amplifier that we are going to be doing exactly the same tutorials as we do for J3. So in here you can do, do all your alarms and check out if your servo drives are, are issuing any alarms. Definitely this software in here is your best friend to figure out what in the hell is going on with your thingy. If you would have any errors, you would literally pop up down here with full blown information what to do and how to deal with it. That is really good implementation, implementation in there. So very good for diagnostics and things like that. So very good for the test moding and, and everything else in there is more or less uh, blanked out because is more for J4 and 5, which I don't know, 5 is coming up soon. There's several things you can, uh, you can use to help in my configure help. So this is in here, this is where you can set up your parameters, but mainly you're going to be select setting up your parameters and FX configurator. But in here you can do some of them. So you can like uh, uh, control type, you can do rotation direction and uh, force. If, if you don't, this is the one I was talking with the PPs. So uh, not PPs, uh, not PPs, there was a, uh, Mm, it's externally you can have a external um, connector block the one that showed you in a CN3 so this is pretty much what we say you're using the force stop or not and then there's a phase setting and a counter output pulses and blah blah so uh, then there's extension usually a couple of things I would check in here so yeah the, this one I would make sure that is not if you're not using it so if you're using you'll be using the same system as I do pretty much make sure that is or not Position control, that all can stay the same. And another thing in here, where is it? Uh, again, changing, we don't need to change that. No, we missed that part. Where is it? Oh, yeah, in an absolute position detection system to make sure you're incremental if you are not using, if your encoder obviously is incremental, if it's, if it's uh, a uh, absolute, that's the different system. So make sure that uh, that is there if you are incremental. Otherwise, you'll be having a ton of. Uh, problems and obviously as remember I said you down there about this battery so then you have all the parameters that inside are inside of the server motor there's a lot of them each one of them as you can see you can read up in here what each one of them means guys this is something for you to do your own homework there you go so to read up what each parameter though you don't need to touch much of these usually but if you want to do like fine tuning, these are the best friends for you down here. So here we go, all of these. But anyway, the video is dragging on. So in here, as you can see, we have our test mode. So the first test mode we're going to be checking out is jog mode. Because we are in test mode, remember to show that switch in there. That allows us to put uh, everything in test mode. So let's increase this uh, camera a little bit. I'm going to sort of cover the screen. So uh, we are, uh, what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to show you, we are going to change a, 
RPM to 2000 and uh, 1000 milliseconds of a acceleration. So let me move this up a little bit so you can see. So we can hold the button. As you can see now, our servo is functioning pretty good. So you can do that in reverse. So that's pretty much how you would work with the jog mode. So if you want to check some of the positions, if you really want to run a test, you can go into positioning mode if you want to in here. And in here, so uh, we can select as well 2000 and RPM. And by the way, if we move distance, 262,144 no, pulses is actually one revolution. Let's have a look. That is what I call precise. There we go, you see? I'm clicking it. I'm just going to show you. Ooh, again. There you go, as you can see. Perfect every time. So that's how pretty much you can test your positioning if you wish to. And later on, we're going to be checking out all other different parameters. But ladies and gentlemen, this is FR Configurator 2. I just thought that this guy in here, which is FX Configurator, we will leave that for the next video because you're going to be using that to set this uh, uh, servo with our uh, controller for FX3U series controller. We're going to be using that. That's what is pretty much this guy it is for, just for that unit. So that will be, ladies and gentlemen, it. I hope this is a good introduction for you to get yourself stuck in in Mitsubishi servos. I know we're starting with a very old, uh, fairly older version, but these AJ3s are very, still a lot of them out there. So it would be a great uh, place to start with them. And then we could progress to J4, and then probably gonna jump J5, then we're gonna jump on Ombron, then we're gonna jump on Bradley's. All different types you're gonna be doing. So that will do, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it gives you good insight. Definitely ask questions if you have any in description below, and I'll answer them as soon as and as accurate as I can. Other than that, if you like the video, smash the like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.